Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be so cool. I, I'm excited. I, I know that it works. I'm just my first time. It's all technique. How you do it. What gauge? Oh, yeah. 16. Pretty heavy gauge. Yeah, and then we put the bead in the top and the bottom and the little handles. The handles are there so we can put a 2x4 through, and if we have to lift it up, if it's hot, you know? I mean, the 2x4 won't burn by the time you do that, so we can do that. And I brought some mesh just in case I want to make a cover, in case the wind really kicks, in case the marks start flying up. Mm -hmm. I brought that. I brought some mesh and those two metal bars, and I figured I'll roll the metal bars in the end of the mesh and then just we'll just kind of lay it down here and I brought some nippers if we have to cut around these handles oh cool well we, we'll probably get some some wind and some sparks coming up well that's why we're gonna keep the hoses and the fire extinguishers handy and we wet this area down so it gives us a little bit of a buffer so just in an hour and a half um, you should have the the drier the material the faster it takes um, the person who turned me on to it, Kelpie, she said it would probably burn about an hour to an hour and a half with that dry wood. made by some shop in Oxnard. It was too expensive, you know, for a one. The prototype costs a lot. They will eventually sell. We're, we're hoping to sell it for about $3.95. Uh, done this way. It's a lot of work. try to have somewhat uniformity in the material. This is all fairly uniform. I mean, obviously if you had specific lumber that you cut up, it'd be all the same. So once it's charred, it's all gonna be very brittle, very light and very brittle, so it breaks very easily. And what we'll do is we'll just get in there after it's done and we'll just crush it all down. Well, what's happening is, is the way it's layered in there, the layer on the bottom, is not getting very much oxygen as you keep layering it up. You can see how the smoke stops after a few minutes, pretty much. That's because it's robbing that oxygen from below. Okay, so at the bottom, it's going to open. Yeah, and as you keep layering it up there, I mean, that's really going nicely right now, even with the wind. Well, you kind of see how this shape works because yeah, the angles... Yeah, the shape is angles, crucial to the design. Right, it creates a vortex. We're not seeing that, but it's vortexing counterclockwise. It's actually going... Uh, this way, mm. so not this way, because the heat is using up the oxygen. So down below, it, the oxygen can't gather because the heat is taking it and using it right away to, to burn the material on the top layer. Yeah. So every time we add another layer, it robs oxygen from the lower layer. That's why the lower layers won't go to ash. Now you're getting a little bit of ash here, so we could. We could probably layer another. Uh, but yes, we're ready. We could probably. Burn, baby, burn. Burn, baby, burn. Disco and burn. Now, how high do you eventually layer? Right up to the right up to the Yeah, the white is that ash, but there's not going to be that much of it. It's mostly going to be on the surface. Because as we layer up and take the oxygen away, it's just going to go basically to carbon at that point, the majority of it. So how do you know when to add more wood? You when can kind black. of see it, you know, when it starts to get charry yeah. like this. When, when it starts to char and you get to see a little bit of white, add you add the next layer. The, the, I think this can go up to 1,200 and it goes past it, so it says high. 
16? I don't know. I got to get one that goes to 2,000 so I can, I, I really want to know. So this was from Harbor Freight, it was cheap enough, but I need a big one. Michael, when do you start your, your tapping? Oh, um, as it starts to break, as the, the char starts to, sh as the wood starts to shrink, the wood's going to be shrinking, the pile's going to go down a little bit. And uh, so it just sort of goes down on its own. We don't tap it and crush it until it's all done and quenched. That's how it, yeah, once you quench it, because otherwise it's, if you try to do it when it's hot, you're going to get sparks all over you. So you want to cool it down and then do it. But wow, this thing is working quite well. Are you telling it me this is. is the first time you've used this? Uh, myself, personally, yes. Um, I got the idea back in October from a friend who's been doing it. And like I said, in Japan, they've already been doing this for, you know, a couple hundred years they've been doing this. And the ones in Japan are huge. I mean, they're like a, a, a small pool or a hot tub, you know, that you would get into. And they're made of stainless steel and they don't have a bottom. They don't have handles and they don't have a rim like that we have on the top. They just set it down on the ground. And then they'll tilt it a little for air. But what I like the bottom is it, it's safer. You're not getting charcoal on the ground. And um, when you quench in the other one, you gotta go through so much water because it just keeps going right through. With this one, you don't have to use as much water. It quenches a little bit better. And you can also inoculate right in there after it's quenched. Six inch across the top, 16 at the bottom, 16 high. Oh, that creates the 40 degree angle. 46, 16, and what's the height? 46, 16, 16. 16. In the middle of the, the side is about 350. At the bottom, it's about 200, and at the top, it's about 300. So the middle portion where the structure before us and creating a really great pore structure and the steam the just kind of pops everything into making that happen pretty much it looks pretty good to me
want to try to be as uniform in the pieces as you can. So some of the big pieces won't char all the way because we were getting great charring on the smaller ones. So I'm going to definitely be more uniform. But usually the ones that are down, you know, Oh yeah, everything down below is charred beautifully. It's well charred. Yeah. Is there an optimal size? Like, do you want this to be like a powder, or would um, marble be good, or does it? Does it anything under three quarters, I prefer half inch or less. Uh -huh. But you can just crush this up, you know. Put it in a bag and just take a hammer and whack it. Right. 